The 2015 Progress Seminar invited people of San Mateo County from local business, government, and community leaders to take a weekend retreat for networking, brainstorming, and meeting on community issues. In between the two keynote seminars and various breakout sessions, Peninsula TV's Mark Simon got a chance to get the inside scoop with the Progress Seminar attendees. And now conversations with Mark Simon at the 2015 Progress Seminar. We're with uh, Supervisor Dave Pine from the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. Um, any uh, particular issues you've been hearing about at the Progress Seminar? Anything that's really sort of struck your, uh, your interest? Well, so far I've uh, attended two good panels, one on water, which is top of mind for everyone, and then second on uh, housing and our, the crisis of affordable housing. So perfect topics to talk about here in Monterey. Are you hearing anything that's um, gives you, those are really complex and yeah. difficult issues and a lot of people I think are overwhelmed by them. Are you hearing anything that gives you hope, makes you think, oh, I think we can get our hands around this thing? When you come to Monterey, you're reminded that San Mateo is unique in that fact that people from all, all the different cities and business and government are willing to work together. So it's, it gives you hope that we can, we can do some things locally that probably can't happen in other parts of the state. I, I know you're spending a lot of time on uh, sea level rise and you're worried about that. Is that one of those issues that you're worried not enough people are paying enough attention to? I have spent a great deal of time in sea level rise, and that has actually moved uh, more broadly into the issue of, of flood um, risks. So it's a strange thing to talk about in the midst of a drought, but in fact, in a few days, a major report's going to be released from the Bay Area Council describing what would happen to the, the Bay Area in the event of a 125-year storm, and it, it'd be like Loma Prieta. So uh, San Mateo County uh, has some catching up to do, and maybe, uh, maybe next year's progress seminar we can We'll have some rain and we can talk about flood risks. <laughs> Here with Alicia Aguirre. Yes. How was that? Is that okay? That's perfect. Um, Thank you. City Council of Redwood City and also a teacher up at Kenyatta College. Professor. Professor. Um, so what, what sessions have you been to and what have you heard that's really intrigued you so far? You know, so far it's been the water and it's also bridging the gap. This is very intriguing because it gives me a lot of things, a lot of things to think about, to go back and like... How do I apply this? How, do, how difficult is it to make change when we can't even do it in a, some of our own rooms here? So it's really interesting, the process, the whole process here. Anything in particular? You, you said you had some thoughts to take back. What, give me an example of one. So um, when we have the discussions, for example, on uh, water in, in our city, we're, we're so ahead of, of the game because we have a recycled water plant. But then we can take some of the other ideas that people have been using, like when I'm on MTC and on other boards, where they're crying for all these others and bring up all the issues that they really come with, because sometimes people don't know all the pieces that come with it. So Jim Leonides, uh, superintendent of the Sequoia Union High School District, welcome. Very happy um, to be here. What, what sessions have you been to and what things have you heard that you found particularly intriguing? Well, I was at the one on housing, and then I went to the one on uh, retail, and then I just came out of the, this one on transportation. And uh, they all touch on very common themes of change that's occurring in our community and, and beyond, and some of the major, major challenges. Certainly housing is an incredibly major challenge uh, to meet. Uh, the retail was very interesting in that all this movement towards upscale types of uh, retail and how retail is changing with technology and so on. And then obviously these challenges of transportation. The presentation was more about the 101 corridor, but actually people were bringing up about Dumbarton and the bridges and how all, you know, we really are a much larger network of uh, community in the Bay Area and we really have to be looking at issues from that perspective. Uh, Maureen Frechette from, from the San Mateo City Council. Uh, so tell me about some sessions you've been to and what's uh, really caught your fancy. Um, the two sessions that I really enjoyed the most was one on affordable housing. It's such a challenging issue facing our community, but what I what came away from was that we need to engage the whole community. There's a lot of misunderstanding among people on what affordable housing looks like, who are the people that need it. So we would need to do that real community engagement to get people understanding why it's so important. Um, the one thing I, the other one I went to was on retail. And what I came away with that was um, all of the cities are looking at mixed-use developments where we require retail on the bottom, housing above. Housing's really where the developers are making the money, so they're not giving a lot of thought to what the retail looks like. 
and they're uh, putting in um, depths of 45 feet. They're not thinking about uh, loading docks or the garbage or some of the things that, that discourage retail from going in. So um, as someone who's in the position of policy making, I think we need to look at how do we address those issues going in with developers to make sure that we don't end up with empty retail spaces. If we're going to require it, we need to give them some opportunity to think about what should go in those spaces ahead of time so that, so that we don't end up with it not working the way we want it to. Talking to Richard Holliber, who is the uh, San Mateo County Community College District Trustee. Tell me about uh, some of the sessions you've been to and what kind of thoughts you've been hearing, uh, something that intrigued you. I was just at the water session and it was more of a game role playing thing and that was real different. It was a way for us to kind of get to know each other at the table and just start touching on the issue of water and I thought it was thought provoking, just the approach. Is there um, anything about water that you thought, well, this is, some of these problems we deal with here are incredibly complex. What do you come away with in terms of how we're going to address some of these tough issues like housing and income inequality and water? Boy, that's a tough one. Um, I think water is a very difficult one, and uh, we've got to start with conservation. That's always the first thing you do, whether it's energy, water, or anything else, and then probably some regulation. Talking to Elizabeth Lewis from the Atherton Town Council. So what sessions have you been to today, and what have you heard that's uh, a good takeaway for you, something intriguing? Well, I uh, first stopped off at the transportation uh, session, and that was very enlightening. Roads, rail, and water, and the importance of uh, keeping our uh, 101 corridor uh, throughout the region uh, vibrant and uh, moving our goods and services. Mm -hmm. So then I just, uh, I, I did the Cal Water and the Nosy game is so much fun. Yeah. It, everyone should try it. It's a lot of fun. And then retail. Uh, Atherton has so much retail, so I was, <laughs> I was quite in, in, interested in hearing about uh, the new trends in retail. So I'm on my way to housing now. Well, Atherton's always a, a net donor when it comes to retail. Mm -hmm. You ever see any, any businesses in Atherton, anything like that ever happening, you think? Or is well, I'm hopeful that with our new Civic Center development that we may have uh, a little cafe within our uh, library, police, and town administration offices. It would be a nice draw. It'd be a nice, and it wouldn't be uh, a chain store. It would be maybe a nonprofit, uh, you know, uh, uh, group that uh, can do something for us. Gina Pappen, former Millbrae Council member, still coming to the Progress Seminar. Why are you still coming? You're not in office anymore. You don't have to. I'm running for re-election. Uh, <laughs> covering the bases. I'm actually the chair of the Millbrae Sustainability Committee. So as all cities, we're trying to become more and more sustainable and learning a lot of different things here regarding retail and transportation and housing and covering all the bases. So you've been obviously to some of the sessions. Is there anything that's really jumped out at you? Any intriguing thoughts, any takeaways? Uh, the interesting thing, I think one of the most interesting things anyway, was retail and how they're all trying to adapt to consumer needs and how the consumer needs are changing. Consumers want more entertainment when they're going out or to someplace to shop and what the retailers are looking for as far as brick and mortar and the internet and all of that. So integrating all of those types of aspects, making retailers happy and also welcoming them to your city. So, of course, we were educated on you got to improve the uh, approval process, make it go as quickly as possible, and we, we all agree about that. So we want to make sure, as this county is exploding and uh, becoming more and more vibrant, uh, that we make it a good all-around experience for everybody. Charles Stone, a freshman member of the Belmont City Council. Is this your first progress seminar? Third. This is my third progress seminar. Okay. Tell me, um, you've been to all the sessions now. Tell me um, what's jumped out at you. What's a takeaway? I, I would imagine the retail one is important to you because of your ambitions for Belmont. Yeah, it's very interesting to listen to what kind of retail works where and that retail isn't always suited for certain locations, but that we have to keep it in mind. It helps grow the economy and often developers are only concerned with the residential and they may not have the same interest or incentive because uh, they're not always going to be there. And we have to remember what the community needs to look like to work for Belmont. Um, also, what stuck with me is what always sticks with me at the Progress Seminar, which is how lucky we are to have such dedicated leaders, um, business leaders, community leaders, 
leaders, elected officials that are willing to come down here, spend their time, share ideas, to collaborate to come to good results for the county. I have Eric Lochfeld of the Fox Theater in downtown Redwood City and two or three other uh, major community activities you're involved in. Is this your first progress seminar? It is my second. Your second. So tell me, um, you know, you're still a newbie. What's your experience like here? What are you finding about it? Well, my goal this year was to not leave my name tag behind at any of the tables, and I succeeded in that. So, no, it's been a wonderful experience. I love the range of topics and uh, some areas like water, for instance, that don't really cross over into my sector as much as it should, and, and hearing you know different people's ideas on that is fascinating. Did you go to the retail section? Because I would think that one would jump out at you. I mean, you, that's the business you're in. You're hoping there'll be more retail in downtown Redwood City, draw more clients and customers for you? Yes, I definitely did. It was the first one I went to this morning, and it would have been my first choice if uh, it wasn't already on my name badge. But yeah, it was fascinating to get different people's takes on what's going on. I, I love the fact that Hillsdale Mall has decided that entertainment is going to be what they bet on to get more people coming to their mall. So that certainly is working uh, in my work world and down in downtown Redwood City. Kirsten Keith, Menlo Park City Council. Um, so tell me about something you've been in one of the sessions you've been at, something that's really jumped out at you was a major takeaway for you. Well, I just left the transportation session where Seamus Murphy spoke, and we did get questions about the Dumbarton Rail, and you know that's near and dear to my heart, and we're going to be speaking about that next week. And Seamus seems to think that, you know, we can hopefully find some money to get the uh, environmental impact report off the shelf and finish the CEQA and the NEPA and see what we can do with this project and move it forward with some private partnerships as well. So you came down here with a real specific agenda, it sounds like. Yes. What about the other sessions you've been at? Is there anything that's really jumped out at you? Well, yeah, there are a couple of things. I think that Santa Clara County is really ahead of themselves. Um, in the minimum wage issue. And I think San Mateo County as a whole, we need to look at the minimum wage issue and we need to talk about raising it. Uh, Mountain View just said that they're gonna be raising it in July to $10.30 an hour. And you know, I'd like to see uh, us do it in our, in our county as well. Assemblyman Kevin Mullen, um, how many progress seminars have you been to? Wow, I have not counted them up, but I'm gonna say maybe, this could be 12 or 13, something. I'm not, you know, uh, Jerry Hill at 20 or whatever it was, but, you know. <laughs> That's a respectable number. Tell me, um, you know, you travel around the state, you work with legislators from other places. Something tells me this is a kind of a unique thing that San Mateo County does. Uh, it most certainly is a unique thing. In fact, I was talking to a couple of my colleagues about this, and they were commenting that they didn't have something like that where you kind of, Everybody sort of, uh, you know, has a, a government, uh, a private sector, uh, education community, sort of collaborative, uh, off-site conversation like this. And uh, uh, our Senator uh, Hill was talking about, uh, he was one of those folks that didn't like uh, heading out of San Mateo County to have this kind of conversation. But there really is, I think, a value. Uh, it's certainly an attractive, uh, gorgeous location down here in Monterey, and, and we have a packed house in there, folks, that are, are true uh, stakeholders from a, a whole cross-section of the community uh, coming together uh, to try to solve some problems. And there are pl problems, even with this low unemployment rate and a, and a roaring economy. You know, we've got affordable housing issues, we've got traffic issues congestion issues, sort of the byproducts of the innovation economy and the success that we're seeing. And that's what uh, this is about, is how we address some of those uh, concerns. You were on the transportation panel, I think, probably talking about your 101 congestion, sort of try and tackling the issue starting at a macro level without having to go through the whole statement again. Give me an idea of what, what kind of things you were talking about there. Well, it's a convening uh, of regional uh, entities, uh, local entities with the private sector. That's why it's, it's relevant for this audience we have here uh, to try to come up with a menu of uh, options to deal with what is um, often unbearable congestion on 101, Highway 101. Uh, my main emphasis, though, is it's not just Highway 101, it's the 101 corridor, which includes the Caltrain electrification project by 2020, all of the action happening on El Camino Real, which has become an alternate commute. And then 101 itself, we're looking at HOV lanes and potentially a, a toll lane, which is not a cure-all because you shift traffic to other lanes. But, but this corridor is such an economic zone of productivity for the state that in order to keep the momentum going on, uh, the economic development, uh, we really need to reinvest in this entire corridor to, uh, to deal with what is um, uh, really a difficult congestion problem. 
with uh, Larry Buckmaster, the, the godfather of the Progress Seminar. How many have you been to? Uh, about 35. And it's 46 years old, so you've been there almost since the beginning. Yeah, I came in diapers. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a huge crowd today, a lot of really difficult issues. It must be satisfying to you to see, A, that it's still going on, and B, the kinds of things they're talking about, the serious work they're doing here. I, I'm very proud of the way it's evolved into where now the issues that are being talked about are the current issues and the issues that affect not only the business community, but everyone. And I think it's it just shows that business people are concerned about more than just making money. A, a lot of people have talked today about the atmosphere of collaboration that this exemplifies. Is that something that's distinct to this area and maybe a lot of other places couldn't hold something like this? I think so, because uh, when we first started out, it was just Redwood City. And then uh, we now have, what, about 12 chambers that participate and and get along very well. And I, I haven't seen anything exactly like this anywhere you know else. In well, congratulations, Larry. Thank, Thank you. you very much. For more video on the 2015 Progress Seminar, go to www.pentv.tv slash videos slash specials slash Progress Seminar.